Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, clap your hands. Praise the Lord, everybody. For this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, stand to your feet. For God is worthy to be praised. Come on, put your hands together. God, we love you. We worship you. You're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Yes. Glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless the Savior. Oh, we bless your name. 
thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Our gracious God. I know you've been here. You, you've always here because you're omnipresent God. But we just want to say welcome in this house. Welcome in this house. Just come and sup with us just a little while. Oh. Almighty God, Father God, consecrate and ordain this service right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we know it's well, because it is well, and we just want to thank you, God. Father, we want to thank you, oh God, for the virtual audience. Thank you. We want to thank you for our in-person congregation. Thank you. We want to thank you for this annual day for the women. Thank you. In all things you say, give thanks. Father, we just want to bless you in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, how sweet it is to trust in Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you. I know a charge to keep I have and a God to glorify. And I just want to thank you, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless the women of this church and the visitors today, oh God. Bless them on virtual audience, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, the women wear many hats oh God and I want you to supply their every need but God bless all oh God in this congregation some for one thing and some for another God but we just ask that you bless as only you can bless we just want to thank you God Father God our pastor Pastor Timothy Dave Carruthers, oh God, and Lady Jill, oh God, wherever they are, put your loving arms around them, oh God, protect them, oh God, Father, 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 this is a mean world, God, but oh God, your people, your people, oh God, are walking, oh God, I will pray in the newness of you, God, thank you, God, in spirit and in truth, oh God, and we just want to thank you, oh God, bless, oh God, the minister of the hour, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, anything that may be fixed in her spirit right now, oh God. Bring her comfort and give her peace. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Speak to her in the name of Jesus. That which she hasn't even prepared for, oh God. Speak as only you can speak to a God. And we just want to thank you, God, that minds will be open and the minds, oh God, can generate to the heart, oh God, and the ears of the heart, oh God, will hear your unadulterated word in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you, God. We want to thank you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen and amen. Bless me the name of the Lord. Amen. At this time, Sister Blessy Benavort would give us our scripture. Thank you, Reverend Tucker. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us, we shall be glad and rejoice in it. Today our scripture is coming from uh, the book of John, the Gospel of John. John chapter 4. And I will be reading verses um, 1 through 10. And I will be reading from the New King James Version this morning. Amen. John chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself 
did not baptize but his disciples. He left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sechar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore being wearied from his journey, sat there by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Amen. God's word for God's people. Amen. Hymn number 181, Pass Me Not.
Good morning, Friendship. On behalf of Pastor Carruthers and Lady Jill, the women of Friendship would like to welcome all visitors and friends here in the sanctuary on Zoom and Facebook Live to God's house. We pray that each one of us will take something from this worship experience to enhance our relationship with God. Welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Kizzy. Let us listen to these announcements, please. We want to say happy Sunday, happy Women's Day, and listen to these announcements. It is a friendly reminder that next Sunday, October the 29th, we will wear pink. Please wear pink in observance of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Our fall festival is here on October the 31st from 6 o'clock p.m. to 8 p.m. If you have any questions, please contact Sister Deborah Kenny or Sister Beverly Lassane. Also, another friendly reminder to sign up for the Veterans Day Breakfast, which takes place on Saturday, November the 11th, in the Fellowship Hall. You can also see Sister Carolyn Lattimore or Sister Alice Baldwin. I'd like to say to our women, may I be aware of the assessments. We ask you to do the best you can. And again, to our visitors, the welcome has been extended. And if there are any first time visitors here with us this morning, would you stand or just raise your hand in the first time visitors? All right. First time visitors. Oh, thank you and bless you. Bless you. Yes, I want to say to you before you leave out of the, the sanctuary here to the left as you go out the door will be some welcome packages. And we hope that you will enjoy your stay here with us. Amen. At this time, we have Sister Lily Johnson come forward. Good morning, Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. I will uh, lead, we will all say, our mission statement, and that is what friendship is all about. To love God by valuing and affirming the image of God in all humanity all humanity. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lily. And you will say the vision statement as you see it on the screen. To be the loving and friendly church God has called us to be. Amen. I hope we represent ourselves just as the vision has stated. All right. We worship our Lord and Savior not only in our singing and our preaching and all the things that is part of worship, but our offering is also a part of worship. Amen. To God be the glory. First of all, I want to know, is anybody in the house of the Lord? All right, y'all act like y'all don't know what to do. You act like foreigners in this land, but we come to have Women's Day, amen? So you need to stand and give God the glory up in here, amen. I said, Lord, I don't want to take over, but God has been too good for us to sit on the sideline and act like we don't know what to do. So I don't know what you come to do, but I'm 
going to praise the Lord. Amen. And we can praise him by just all coming together on one accord. And we're going to read our giving declaration. Y'all know how it is. Y'all acting like you're strange and had such a rough night. We serve a God that's alive and well. And you better act like you want to tell somebody to tell somebody who the Lord is. Amen. Amen. Friendship, this is Women's Day. And women acting like we scared and tight and don't know what to do. But we're going to praise the Lord. Because for God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Come on, somebody. Our giving declaration, let us all read it together. I give not just because I have it. I give because I am grateful. I give not just to be blessed. I give because I'm already blessed. So what God gives me, I give a portion unto God for the furthering of the mission and the vision of God's church. And because I have faith to trust God with my life, I also have the faith to trust God with my finances. Therefore, I give cheerfully, I give generously, and I give consistently. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 You may take your seats, but let's pray before um, the officers and trustees come and we prepare to do our offering unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. Amen. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for the already blessed words that are going to come forth. We thank you, dear Lord, for our tithes and our offerings, Lord, to be used for the uplifting and upbuilding of your kingdom. We thank you, dear Lord, because we've already read that we are blessed beyond measures. So we give back a portion unto you. So, dear Lord, accept our offerings from our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and yes, Lord, from our pockets. In Jesus' precious name, come on, somebody, say amen. amen. It is now in the hands of our trustees and officers, amen. Okay, are we ready? Two outside aisles, stand. Y'all know what to do. <laughs> amen.
Amen. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. Friendship, thank you. But most of all, God bless you and thank you for your tithes and offerings. The church ought to say amen. God be the glory and thank Reverend Parker for such an uplifting, uplifting presentation to the Lord. Amen. At this moment, we're gonna have a, a moment of silence. You may let that moment be to whomever you so choose, but with it being Women's Day, I am sure there is a has been a significant, a significant woman in your life or is in your life. Lift them up right now, men and women in this church. Lift them up to the Lord. There are many who are in need of your prayers. Amen. The moment of silence. would you accept these prayers that have gone up to you Father God from sincere hearts I know they will not return void everything is in your will Amen we are going to wait a while or right now we are going to hear the voice of someone that is very familiar to you Amen all right, y'all be ready up there. Greetings. Pastor Tim here. Uh, excited to celebrate our women uh, on this, our annual Women's Day here. Uh, at the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, <clears throat> Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, 400 Campbell Avenue. Uh, it does me great joy to be able to greet uh, the women of our church because for, uh, or since the beginning of time, women in particularly, uh, black women specifically, has been the consciousness not only of our faith spaces, uh, but the consciousness of our nation. And it's that uh, consciousness that we celebrate today. Uh, I am under any illusion that I know if it was not for you, there would not be any us. You can call the role, whether Fannie Lou Hamer or Sojourner Truth or Coretta Scott King or Rosa Park or Clovet Coven, and the list goes on and on. Uh, you stand in that rich legacy today. And from my heart to yours, I am so happy to say that I passed for some of the greatest women this side of heaven. So happy uh, Women's Day, enjoy your day, and enjoy the good preaching that you are about to receive. Good morning, Friendship family. Today, I am introducing my big sis, my sister in love, Keisha Mathis. Uh, Keisha currently resides in Atlanta, Georgia. She has two beautiful children and now a daughter-in-law. Um, Keisha is a woman of God. Um, she is currently pursuing her doctoral degree in educational leadership, and she is currently the Director of Academic Excellence at Morehouse College. So today, I introduce to you none other than my big sis, Keisha Mathis. Enjoy.
Is he your provider? Is he your protection? Is he your healer? Is he your all in all? God is my all in all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
got the baddest band there is here in Fayetteville. And he's sure enough to, listen, it ain't my fault. Y'all did this. All right, so when y'all give the report, and if you looking, Pastor Tim, I didn't do it. Your people don't know how to act. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Let us pray. God, you are a great God. God, you are a wonderful and awesome God. You are a merciful God. You are a kind God. You are a forgiving God. You are a wonderful God, and you are our provider and our sustainer. God, you are our healer as well. You are king of kings, lords of lords, alpha and omega. You are the beginning and the end. And Lord, because you are, I am. Lord, we ask right now that you open up the hearts and the minds of your people to receive your divine word. Block any interference, Lord, that will try to hinder your word from going forth and falling on good soil to produce a harvest. Lord, this is my prayer that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh God, my Redeemer, this is your servant's prayer. It is in the mighty name and matchless name of Jesus, the Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Our God is great, and God is greatly to be praised. It's just another day's journey, and I'm glad about it. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, come on and magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together, for the Lord is... For the Lord, is, the Lord is good and his mercy endures to all generations. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. You know, some things we can think on, but one thing I know we all can agree on, he woke us up this morning, right? He clothed us in our right mind, right? He didn't let us sleep too late. He got us up right on time. And because of that, I have the activities of my limbs. I have my eyesight. I have my ears to hear. And most importantly, I have breath to breathe. And the Lord says everything that has breath ought to what? Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Put those hands together and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Good morning, good morning, Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, 400 Campbell Avenue, Fayetteville, North Carolina. It is quite an honor to be here with you today. I honor your pastor, Timothy D. Carruthers, and your first lady, Jill Baskerville Carruthers, in their absence, as well as the pastor Meredith and his lovely wife, to this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful congregation, I say thank you. Thank you so much. I honor you as well. You could have invited anyone from the White House to the penthouse, even from your own house. But you didn't count it robbery to invite me, and for that I'm grateful. I thank you so much. Now, I will be amiss if I did not thank my lovely family who has traveled with me. Uh, I can't look at my sister too much, y'all, because she get the crying, and I don't know who cried the most, her or my brother. I'm, I'm, just, not, I'm, just, I'm just not sure, but listen, I want to thank my sister, Sandra D. Williams, the oldest of the crew, uh-huh, Sandra, and my cousin, LaShawn Debos, and my cousin, Kevin Moore. Y'all know him as Jebo. I know you don't want me to tell it, but that's what they call you here, Jebo. You've heard your pastor talk about Jebo. Y'all listen, 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 listen. Let me boast just a little bit. Let me just boast a little bit. Let me boast. I got my DL in the house with me today. I got my DL in the house with me today. My daughter in love. Yes. I, I, I'm going to have to ask you to stand. You know that, right? I got my daughter in love, Mrs. Ariana 
Cruz Belmont. Yes, this is my daughter in love, y'all. Listen, they got married in Disney World. They had the most. I'm so glad I get to do this first before Uncle Tim. Oh, I'm so excited before y'all pass to get to do this. But they had a beautiful, magical wedding. And she's here with her parents, my sis and brother, Jose and Don Sisberry. That's my sisberry right there, y'all. Don Cruz. I just want to say thank you all for coming. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So I'm not going to tarry before you long. There is a word from the Lord. The scripture has been read into your hearing already, John chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. But if you don't mind, we'll, we, we will use and focus on verse 4. And it says, he must needs go through Samaria. He must needs go through Samaria. They say you ain't supposed to be here, black girl. You ain't supposed to wear red lipstick. You ain't supposed to wear high heels. You ain't supposed to smile in public. You ain't supposed to smile nowhere, black girl. You ain't supposed to be more than a girlfriend. You ain't supposed to get married. You ain't supposed to want no dream that big. You ain't supposed to dream at all. You ain't supposed to do nothing but carry babies and carry weeds and carry felons and carry families and carry confusion and carry silence and carry a nation but never an opinion. You ain't supposed to do nothing to say black girl unless it's a joke. Cause you ain't supposed to love yourself, black girl. You ain't supposed to find nothing worth saying in all that brown. You ain't supposed to know that Nina, Beyonce, Tina, Cecily, Shauna Ryan, shine, shine, black girl. You ain't supposed to love your mind. You ain't supposed to love. You ain't supposed to love or be loved upon. You only supposed to pose voodoo child vexing style. You supposed to pop out babies, hide the stretch marks. You supposed to be still, so still that they think you're a statue. So still that they think you're a chalk outline. So still that they thinking you're a stone. Until you look more Medusa than Viola Davis. Until you sound more Shanae than Kerry Washington. Until you're more side-eyed than Michelle Obama on a Tuesday. But you tell them you are more than a hot comb and washing set. You are Kenta Kenta Kunta Kente's kin. You are a black girl worth remembering. And you are a threat knowing yourself. You are a threat loving yourself. You are a threat loving your kin. You are a threat loving your children. You black girl magic. You black girl fly. You black girl brilliance. You black girl wonder. You black girl shine. You black girl bloom. You black girl, you black girl. And you're turning into a black beautiful woman right before our eyes. This poem was wrote by Mahana L. Brown called Black Girl Magic. From the beginning, women have been a threat. I was listening to Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts talk about the beef between the serpent and the woman in the garden. In Genesis 3.15, you will find these words penned. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. Hostility, enmity, hostility, enmity between you and the serpent. Hostility means the state or feeling of being actively opposed. Hostility, hostility, finding someone or something that is always opposing you. It appears that we as black women face a lot of opposition. Opposition on our jobs, opposition in our homes, opposition in politics, opposition in the church, opposition with your friends, opposition with your family, opposition, opposition, opposition. But there is good news about this opposition. God didn't just say that he would only put the enmity or opposition against the woman from the serpent. But this enmity opposition is a two-way street. 
Meaning that the woman is not just going to feel opposed by the serpent, but the woman is going to represent opposition to the serpent as well. So when you step into your destiny, when you realize your purpose and you realize who you are in God, we bring opposition to the enemy's camp. We are bruising his head. So in keeping somewhat with your theme, why now? If you would for a moment rest with this thought, you are the enemy's greatest threat. You are the enemy's greatest threat. This woman in our text this morning, known as the woman at the well or the Samaritan woman, but if you would allow me to give identity to this woman, let me call her Sam. Sam grew up in a society that considered her unclean a society that discriminated against her because of her gender and her nationality, a society in which she had no choice whom she would marry, no choice in whom she should have intimacy, not even a choice if or when if he decided to leave or stay. Sam could be passed along as many as five times plus one. You'll get that when you get home. Yes. I, without her being able to say a word. She was part of a society where her body did not belong to her. This was the reality that Sam lived in. As a Samaritan woman, Sam was considered a half-breed. Yes, this is how the Jews saw her and thought of Samaritans. This Samaritan woman, my sister, Sam was despised. No Jew would be caught dead in Samaria or even in their company. Doesn't this story sound a bit familiar? Today, we as women have little or no say over our own bodies. The law gets to determine when or if we can have a baby. The church sometimes make us feel like we have to have on a long skirt, what you put on, you can't put on, and the world do the same thing. This is the same story, just at a different time. So here in the text, we see Jesus having to do what no other Jew would do. He must needs, verse 4 said, he must needs go through Samaria. 6b says, and it was about the sixth hour. Our first point this morning is the appointment. Jesus had an appointment at 12 noon in Samaria. It was 12 noon, and I'm sure that when uh, Sam, our friend, went there, she probably thought no one else would be there. 12 noon was the hottest time of the day. Yes, Jesus still knew where to find her. Some of you are experiencing some of the hottest times right now in your life. But I came by to tell you, the Holy Spirit must need come through friendship. He knew to meet you here today. Jesus had a purpose going through Samaria just as he has a purpose for you. He had to do what no other Jew would do. We too must do what other people choose not to do. Jesus knew that Sam was despised. He knew that Sam had been used. He knew that Sam had been talked about. He knew that Sam was discriminated against. Jesus knew that Sam was even an outcast. It seems that Sam, the Samaritan woman, was dealing with a lot of opposition. But Jesus had a purpose, Sam, and Sam didn't even realize she had an unscheduled appointment with the divine. Day after day, you deal with opposition on your job. Day after day, you deal with opposition on your job. Day after day, you deal with opposition in the church. You deal with opposition in the street. You deal with opposition because of your race. You deal with opposition because of your gender. You deal with opposition because of your sexual orientation. It seems you can't get a break. 
you feel opposition is on every side. But I just stopped by for a few moments, just for a few moments this morning, and to say there's a must need. You too have an appointment with the divine. Jesus wants you to know, yes, you. Jesus wants you to know that your gender, your race, nor your sexual orientation cannot separate you from his love. He does, it doesn't matter what anybody has to say about you. It doesn't matter what your past has been, what your present is, even what your future may be. He has sought you out and made a detour this morning just to tell you, yes, you, that he loves you just the way you are. Your oppressor or suppressor can't stop what God has in store for you. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, or things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm just going to let it sit for a minute. Nothing can separate you. Not a thing. I don't care what they say, how they said it. It ain't happening. He made a divine appointment this morning. Not this morning, but this morning. This morning. Just to come and see about you, to let you know I am here. This is your will this morning. <laughs> Amen. I am here with you. Amen. So in verse 16, we look at verse 16. It says in verse 16, it says, he told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband. She replied. Jesus said, you know what? You said that well. You're right. You don't have a husband. The fact is you've had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. So I said to myself and myself said to Akisha, that wasn't part of their scripture. At all. But then I blamed it on uh, Sister Simmons. Um, well, Sister, yeah, I blamed it on Sister When she called me, she said, hey, I know we gave you a scripture and a, a verse and a theme, but you do what God tells you to do, right? So I blamed it on you, Sister Simmons, all right? So since she said that, uh-huh, since she said that, I just went on, and then Jesus read 16, and it said, go get your husband. She said, I ain't got one. He said, you're right. You had five, and the one you with is not yours. So, therefore, I could not leave my sister Sam out there like this. I couldn't leave Sam out there like this. Mm -hmm. I had to come to her defense. So, Sam was a Samaritan woman, right? I often wonder how many times the stereotypes and assumptions this Samaritan woman at the well has had to bear over the centuries since she encountered Jesus. After all, she was at the well alone. Aren't biblical women always supposed to travel with a man or at least in pairs? Does she go to the well during the heat of the day to avoid the crowds who's excluding her? Five husbands? Doesn't that make her a prostitute? Maybe she is quarrelsome. And surely she is a questionable character if she has no name. These are the assumptions we made about this woman, my sister, Sam. What we have been taught about this Samaritan woman, as I give her her identity, Sam, mm -hmm, we've been taught that she was promiscuous, promiscuous. We've been taught that she was an outcast. We've been taught that she was easygoing. But Jesus notably makes no more commentary on the marital uh, status of the Samaritan woman. His observation of her relationship history only becomes an opportunity for him to highlight his divinity. Lean in for a moment. Come here, let me tell you a secret. Most biblical women had no autonomy. Most biblical women could not own property. Most biblical women never was in love relationships, were only married off as property. Most biblical women had no power. But these enormous uh, portraits and labels that we people of faith 
have created and painted a biblical women mostly reflect the patriotic desires for women. If we dress a certain way, we're labeled. If we walk a certain way, we become labeled. If your skirt is too short, you labeled. If you have a child out of wedlock, you're labeled. If you get a divorce, you're labeled. If you remarry, they label you. If you're single, you're labeled. We are always labeled by something or someone. Someone in here today has been labeled. Just like we did my sister Sam. All her biblical life, she's been called all kind of names. She had five husbands. Oh, my goodness. She didn't have a choice. Sam didn't divorce them. They put her away. I'm just trying to help somebody. I'm just trying to help. It ain't even in my notes. You said it. I'm just trying to help you. Understand, Sam had no choice. If she had five of them, that's because they left her. And then she got pushed off to somebody else. She was property. And somebody in here today is dealing with labels. Labels because of what your parents have done. Labels because of your past. Labels because of uh, other people's insecurities. Some people just put a label on you just because they want to. They don't have nothing to do. They They don't even know your name. They just look at you, walk in the room, and they label you. But regardless of how people have labeled or viewed you, let me tell you what God says about you. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the righteous of God. You are a masterpiece. You are so precious to Jesus that he died to pay your ransom and give you new life. So, baby... Don't you worry about what people are saying about you. Don't you worry how people are viewing you. Don't you worry what they even label you as. You just remember to regurgitate what God has said about you. Every single time they say something, if they look at you funny and you walking in, you just say, I'm wonderfully made. (laughs) Yes, I am. You know what? I'm gonna tell it in the name of notes. I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna tell it. And it's and I'm giving. I'm gonna put this on my mama. Bless your heart, mom. She's in heaven. But I'm gonna bring her on right here. The ancestors right here with me. So this morning, let me tell you. Not in my notes. Let me tell you this. This morning we was riding. My cousin Sean said, "I learned something new about you this morning, Keisha." I said, "What you learn?" She said, uh, "I learned you keep the rearview mirror on yourself when you're driving." That's what she said. Am I lying? Did you say? She said that. And I said, dang. I said, people tell me that all the time. But let me tell you why, what this is all about. When we were growing up, sister here, my mom made sure. That's why y'all pastor so spoiled. My mama made sure to tell us every day, you are beautiful. Every day, you are somebody. Every day, girl. It ain't never been a time my brother was in the pulpit. She probably texted him and said, you know you look good today. So all I'm trying to tell you today is don't worry about what people are saying about you. You tell yourself, I am beautiful. You tell yourself, I am a masterpiece because I'm a piece of the master. You just smile it off and keep on moving and keep on trucking because the bottom line is this. They have no heaven nor hell to put you in. So you just keep on moving. Keep on trucking. Because God has a purpose for you. He wants to highlight his divinity through you. So now we see the appointment and we see the assumption. Finally, let's look at the assignment. Verse 28 and 30 says, Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come, to the men to come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They come out of the town and made their way toward him. This woman 
no name. This woman whose race seems to be offensive to the Jews. This woman who has clearly been put aside by men a few times, mostly passed along, is the woman whom Jesus has chosen to be an evangelist. This woman who people talk about. This woman who people shun. This woman who people say I never amount to nothing. This woman who people are looking at your current situation and saying it'll never happen. This woman is the one that Jesus decided to use. This woman. So despite the picture one may paint of her, despite the lies that has been told about her, Jesus had a purpose and a plan for stopping by the well, and it wasn't to rebuke her, but to anoint her to spread the good news of Jesus. Let me say that one more time. He stopped by the well not to rebuke her, because that's what we've been taught. Uh huh. He stopped by the well to anoint her so she can go out and tell everybody about the good news of Jesus. See, you see me when, you, when I left you going to the well, y'all was talking about me. When, when I left you and was going to the well, y'all was calling me, you know, probably a prostitute, whatever. When I left to go to the well, y'all was saying I'm nothing. I'm just a whatever. She, she, look, nobody ain't looking at her. She, she's a what? What did I say she was? She, they, they talked about her because she was a half-breed, you know? They talked about her, but when I left, that's what y'all were saying. But come here, y'all. When I had an encounter with Jesus, he came to say, baby, I ain't worried about what they talking about. You right, that's it. That's what they said. They said all of that. But baby, I came to anoint you. I came to anoint you. Somebody in here today need to know that the Lord came to anoint you. He ain't not care nothing about your business. He came to anoint you today. Not only did Jesus empower her, but he also gave her authority. Verse 30 says, they came out of the town and made their way toward him. Don't give up, woman of God. Don't you even give in. The enemy wants to tear you down before you can tear his kingdom down. Remember, you are his greatest threat. So Jesus did not go to the well to condemn her, but to emancipate her. He is here today to do the same for you. To set you free of what you're worrying about how others think of you, to set your mind free. Quit worrying about people and their labels. He wants to use you. Can I call the row a little bit, y'all? He wants to use you like he used Abraham, who was old. He wants to use you like he used Elijah, who was suicidal. He wants to use you like he used Joseph, who was abused. He wants to use you like he used Job, who went bankrupt. He wants to use you like he used Moses, who had a speech impairment. I'm going to come down your road. He wants to use you like he used Gideon, who was afraid. He wants to use you like he used Samson, who was a womanizer. He wants to use you like he used Rahab, who was a prostitute. He wants to use you like he used Noah, who was a drunk. I'm still coming. He wants to use you like he used Jeremiah, who was young. He wants to use you like he used Jacob, who was a cheater. He wants to use you like he used David, who was a murderer. I'm still coming to you. He wants to use you like he used Jonah, who ran from God. He wants to use you like he used use Naomi who was a widow he wants to use you like he used Peter who denied him three times he wants to use you like he used Martha who worried about everything he wants to use you like he used Zacchaeus who was small and was so money hungry he wants to use you like he used the disciples who fell asleep 
why he was praying. He wants to use you like he used Paul, who was a Pharisee, persecuting Christians, but now he was talking about Jesus. And the same, he wants to use you like the Samaritan woman who was called all kind of names and was divorced. God is not interested in your excuses. Nor is he interested in your labels. God has chose you. God stopped by here for you. You better get it. He stopped by. You, when you leave here today, you ought to walk with your head proud. Be like, Lord, I went through that for this. You ain't never paid no attention to that. I mean, I let these people get in my head like that. And you, you used a drunk. Come on. You used a murderer. You used a homonger. Come on, y'all. What are we talking about in here? We're talking about how God can use you in spite of you. We're talking about allowing people, allowing people to get in your mind and you stop doing what God has called you to do because you think you're not good enough. But if truth be told, you just don't know what they have done. A preacher often say, you know, sometimes we look at the sins we can see. Uh-huh, we look at those sins we can see. But if they put a sin detector at the door... If they put that sit all the beep 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 you know why? Because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. Jesus didn't call the equipped. He equipped the called. One more time. Jesus didn't call. Y'all read all them people? He didn't call the equipped. He equipped because he just needs your yes. That's all he needs is your yes. If you just tell him yes, he'll do the rest. That's all he's waiting on is your yes. So no matter what you've been through in life, Remember that the same power that conquered the grave lives within you. You are worthy of life. You are worthy of God's love. You are worthy of joy. You are worthy of fulfilling purpose that will take you places you never imagined. So rise up, woman of God. Take your mantle and go forth because you are the greatest enemy, the enemy's greatest threat. You don't have to do this alone. As I close, there's a story, a very familiar story. I'm sure you probably heard it, but I love it. And I'm going to say it again because I love it. There's a story told about a young girl who often goes to church with her parents every Sunday. And so she goes to church Sunday after Sunday, and she comes home looking perplexed a lot. And so the parents, you know, your children can look strange anyway sometimes. Well, you really don't pay no sweet attention to it, you know. So the little girl comes home. She's just looking perplexed. So finally one day she decided, you know what, I'm going to ask the question. I'm just going to go ahead and ask this question. Mom and Dad, can I ask you a question? They said, sure, dear. What is it? She said, who is Andy? The parents said, huh? She said, who is Andy? They said, babe, I'm sorry. I don't know nobody named Andy. They said, Mom and Dad, yes, you do know Andy. They looked at each other. They said, this is a strange child. I don't know nobody named Andy, baby. I'm sorry. She was adamant. Yes, you do know Andy. I don't know Andy. She said, y'all know him because the pastor talk about him every Sunday. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. He walks with you. And he talks with you. And he tells you that you are his own. Baby, he ain't going to leave you out there. He with you always and forever. It's the enemy that comes to kill and destroy. But God comes that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And 
and he walks with you, and he talks with you, and he tells you that you are his own. Come on, child of God. Rise up, women. Take your place. Take your place. He's walking with you. He's talking with you. Sometimes in the midnight hour, you don't think he's there. Andy is in the room. Andy is in the room. Just call on Andy, and Andy will do it for you. Andy will never leave you. Andy will never forsake you. Andy will feed you when you're hungry. Andy will pay your bills when you think you ain't got enough money. When your money looks strange, right? Andy will take you to the hospital, and Andy will heal your body. Andy will go to the courtroom with you, and Andy will say, uh, get the lawyer. Andy, his name is is and here. Hey. And take your rightful place, women of God. Take your rightful place. Rise up and bruise the enemy's head. Walk in your God-given purpose and let God use you. Because y'all ask me why? Because you are the enemy's greatest threat. God bless you. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. We have had a oh, it's not, we have had a message. Indeed, we have had one. And I know you in here know Annie. Annie woke me up this morning. She preached us. She preached it. I won't dare touch it. But I'm so glad Annie healed my body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Reverend Mathis. For letting God use it. He spoke to you, girl. You didn't have all that written down. Hey, yeah, no, no, no. Hey, back there, back there, we asked him to speak, speak, speak to her. And he spoke to her and she spoke to us. To God be the glory for all the things that he has done. Have your soul not been fed today? Yes, we get fed every Sunday, but I'm so glad that this woman of God, she really broke the bread of life to us. And I am so glad, and I feel that you are too. And whether we feel not or not, God's got it. She's covered. She's anointed. And she's constantly, my, my, my. I couldn't finish that. It was running, girl. Yes, it was. I couldn't finish it. Bless be the name of the Lord. So now, you've heard the sermon. And there just may be somebody in here sitting out there in our audience today that needs to get a closer or just need to know Annie. Hallelujah. Because Annie certainly will carry you through. Annie. Annie, Annie, Annie. I thank God for Annie. Now, if there is someone out there who does not know Jesus, who has not given their lives to him to save your soul, it is a free gift. It is a free gift. It says in Ephesians 2 that we're saved by God. If that by faith through grace and not of ourselves, we can't do this thing. It's a free gift. Take it. Take your salvation from Jesus. It's free. And if there's someone there, and maybe you do not want to acknowledge it right now, but your heart, your heart is stirred from the word. So I'll say as you sit there and you are not saved, Right where you are, ask the Lord to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. That I am a sinner and I desire to be saved, to shun the penalty of hell. So Lord, I believe that God raised you from the dead. And if you raise God, Jesus, from the dead, I know and I want right now to rise with you. And we just want to thank you. Anybody who is 
desiring salvation right now no matter how if there is any woman you try men you are never overlooked never you may join your lady or you just may come with the latest friendship men or whomever if there are women who want to come and be prayed for please come Wonderfully made, but we need to walk with God each day, and we just can't say, "Okay, I got it," and leave it. It's really true. We all need prayer. And you can. The church is open for you to come. If you don't know, I want you to know that God is real. God is real. God is real. God is real. God's I mean, we got some booming going on, but we got no Jesus. You try. Father, and Father, sure Father, Father, as you are Father, Father, in the name on high, the more you give, the more he gives to you. Father, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. We come before you right now, O oh Lord, giving you thanks for what our ears have heard. Hallelujah. We just want to thank you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the one who can reach. The word has gone out, but God, you are the one that, that can reach. If you be lifted up, God, you would draw all men unto you, Lord. And Lord, we just want to thank you, God. We want to give you praise. Father God, if there's nothing we can do or say, let's, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you, Jesus. For every moment, oh God, we want to say thank you. Every breath that we take, we want to say thank you, Jesus. Father God, pass us not, oh gentle Savior. Hear our humble cry. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you, God. Father, let us not leave out of this place like we came in the name of Jesus. Father, bless us as only you can, only you can. Oh, and it is well. Can you say, it is well with my soul. It is well. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Please carry Reverend Mathis back to her home safely and her cousins and her daughter in love and her family in the name of Jesus. All individuals, put your loving arms of protection around us, oh God. For only you are our protector. You are our keeper. You are the lifter of our heads. And we just want to say thank you, Jesus. Father God, because you wish above all things that we prosper and be in good health as our soul prospers. And Lord, you are the one on whom we shall depend. We want to thank you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the blessed Holy Spirit. We say amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bless. Amen. Yes, Lord, we just want to thank you. At this time, it seems like you just don't want to abruptly just cut off. It just doesn't feel good, but we do go through 
the ministry of the program. But I just feel like a silence right now. I just feel like a silent moment still. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to take the liberty of us just giving the Lord a silent moment of meditation again. Seems like something else needs to just culminate what has been fed to me. Silence. breath in, slowly let it out, God we thank you, we thank you Jesus, amen, amen, Sister Kathy where are you, there you are, to God be the glory, amen. Oh my God. Excellent, excellent, Reverend Mathis. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very uh, excellent, excellent. And I am so pleased that you decided to answer our call. You asked me, why you? Well, you were put on my heart, and I heard you speak didn't even really know that you were a minister, just heard. But we followed God and got and see what we got today. We are so thankful. Mama Iris is so proud of her babies. And uh, little Tim, if he's not looking now, I'm sure when he finished his job today that he will look back and look today to see what his big sis did today. So we are all pleased. At this time, we want to present some gifts to um, some of the members here who are part of the women ministry. But first of all, we want to uh, give to you, if you don't mind coming down. Both of you. The one thing that I got today when the light bulb went off, that Sam had no choice. And the fact is that many of us don't have any choices. And to know that that label that has been put on us, it was all because we didn't have any choices. So thank God for that. You come on down, because I'm start crying. <laughs> This is a little token. You can get you, you know, you can get your new dress maybe, okay? <laughs> we'll keep it over here, but we want to present this basket to you because we love you, and it's just a token. We can never pay you for what you gave us today. <laughs> We're going to hold it over here. Okay, thank you. And we want to honor some other ladies in, um, in our congregation. Um, the next person is our First Lady Jill, which we will keep hers when we see her. We'll just put it in, in Pastor's office. And our third person is uh, First Lady Emeritus, Deborah Downing. Will you come down? We are to always honor those that have gone before us. Amen. And we should have learned some lessons along the way. Mm -hmm. So we, it's not much that we can give you. What we have today will not pay for the things that you've done for us. But we want to hand this token. Turn this way.
Well, uh, we've had we've had several events this year, and our president of the women's ministry, Shinette Simmons. And, okay, um, we want to also give a gift or a basket for the person who works with you in the women's ministry, Teresa uh, Wanawa. <laughs> I can't ever get that name right. Kathy and I are, Dr. Waddell and I are. It's the committee, I'll say. It's the committee for the Women's Day um, ministry today. And we cannot express sincerely our gratitude to all of you for being here today. And I personally want to thank Dr. Waddell for her great leadership in caring and keeping us on point and following through. She's a great leader, and I hope that I did share some things, and we got it done. Got it thank done. you. So to you all, much love and thank you. Well, Reverend Tucker, yes, we got yes. through this, didn't we? Oh, doesn't it feel good? It feels so good, <laughs> especially since uh, Fayetteville State had homecoming, I and I was a part of that. I and trying to do everything, and then I'm looking and saying, oh my God, I left this out, I left that out. Uh, but God knew our hearts, and we, we came through. And for everyone that helped us along the way, I have thank yous in the back. Uh, I'm not gonna call everybody's name, but do know that we love you, we appreciate you, and that we will continue to do God's will. Amen. So, I'm just thinking of Timothy. You know, I just see his face. Reverend, Reverend Carruthers is just having a good time and can't wait until you get off the pulpit so he can call you. Um, the Samaritan woman, I had not heard it before, the way that it, it was preached today. I do want to know that I am a masterpiece and I hope that all of you feel that you are a masterpiece. So thank you, we love you, and thank God that this is over. <laughs> to our close on today of a great Women's Day. Yes, let me pass. Please go by the... Rich. Yes, thank you. And, and I was going to remind them. Yes, and I thank you. All right, the closing selection by the choir. Is that we have a closing? closing selection? Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. 
So let the church say amen. May the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each one of us from now and forever. Amen. 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 amen.